Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. Hey, we find we finally got a long awaited episode y'all been waiting for. We got family in the building. Cuzzo, Javon Carter, the 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 bulldog treadman mentality. Welcome, Cuzzo. How you feeling? Good, man. What's up? What's going on? Nothing, man. It's been a long, long episode, a long overdue. Everybody in the comments asking for you. When y'all gonna get Javon? When y'all gonna get Javon? We got a lot of Valley boys. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just glad we finally got you. Mike, I'm gonna let you start it off with him. Go ahead, pop it off, bro. Yo, Javon, we gonna start up with something real simple. It's just a small game we like to play. Let your fans get to know a little bit more about you, just, you know, off the court type stuff. But it's simple games called this or that. I'm gonna give you two things and you just gotta pick one of them. First one we gonna start off with, Mike or Kobe. Mike. Oreos or Chips Ahoy? Oreos. Facts, okay. Man, I, I was the one to say that Oreos was a little bit overrated, but you know, that, that's me, that's me. No, that's you, ca- you capping. Yeah. That's you capping. <laughs> <laughs> Socks or Cubs? Cubs. Wow, then. Uh, yeah. uh, I wasn't expecting that one. Uh, Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. I don't be rocking with Instagram like that. Man. You don't even really rock with Twitter either. You just ain't no yeah. social. Yeah. I, I don't. Not. Nah, I do rock with Twitter. It's just I don't post a lot on Twitter. It's oh, a different. Okay. Bond don't either. That man don't tweet for shit. That's okay though. That's okay though, man. I, I open that app once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Text or FaceTime. Ooh, that's tough. That is tough because it depends on the person. It do depend, depend on, on the person. person. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's tough. Because some people I text, some people I FaceTime. No, for real. I feel that. Uh, this one I, I like a lot. Uh, Pac or Biggie? Yeah, I got I got, I got got on the shirt that I would say. Biggie. I know you don't rock with no Biggie. Come on, now. That's tough. I don't know. I rock with Biggie, man. I rock with Pop. I too, rock with Biggie. Man. I rock with both too. I rock, I rock with both of them. I rock with both of them. Hey, that's, that's why tough. that's the best question. Cause you you just gonna put somebody in a situation they don't really want to answer that one. I'm a Pac head. Shout out to Biggie though, but I, that's I, I, like I, that's I, the same with like Mike and Kobe too, though. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, that's tough. Real. Mike, uh, just, uh, <laughs> we just go. To, I, I, I didn't even hear him pick one, but uh, cold or hot. Uh, facts. Car or truck? Like facts on that one, though. Car or truck? Car. Uh, sports car. All right. I can't rock with them big, heavy, uh, big, heavy trucks. He meals look like he a truck. truck. Oh, yeah. It's crossover type dude, man. I like trucks. I would love a big <laughs> truck one day. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Save or spin? Huh? Save or spin? Save. No, nah, that's that's tough, man. That's tough to do. No, nah, I like to hear that though. I like to hear <laughs> yeah. that, man. We gotta save uh, our pesos around here. <laughs> PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. We if he was PlayStation too. We had a we had to switch him over. He used to talk yeah. a lot of shit about Xbox. To be honest, for real, I, I still I, I'm still a PlayStation dude, but I got Xbox because y'all got it. But PlayStation, where it's at, bro? No bullshit. PlayStation like iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I used to feel, for real. That's Xbox funny. like Android. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be Xbox. <laughs> Netflix or YouTube? Uh, YouTube. Bro, oh, Netflix is terrible now. I mean, they got some decent originals, but Netflix don't be having. Hey, Netflix. I hey Netflix was falling off, but they 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 put in that black. The black TV on oh, Moesha, girlfriends, Moesha. So they, they, the, they finna start coming back. I mean, you can undefeated it. though. YouTube. They even got, got the Parkers on there now. The they Park. Got, no, the park. You, no, 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 no. They, they do. Don't. They do. I'm. I promise. Yeah, they it's do. over with, bro. They need to add the Boondocks on there though. I promise yeah, you. Martin. They yeah, got Martin. Martin. No, nah, they need to. Oh, they oh, need yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, Martin's on there. It's over with. Yeah. Whoever get Martin, it's gonna be a wrap. I swear. I swear. It's gonna be whoever get Martin. I know they fighting over that. They fight. Oh, Fresh Prince. Fresh huh? Prince too. Fresh yeah. Prince. Was it yeah. Fresh Prince was on something for a minute, then they took it off. It made what? it like Hulu or something. You know, I love Fresh Prince. Yeah, it was on there for a minute. Damn. Uh Drake or Drake or Drake or Cole. Or Cole. 
Ooh. You can tell this a people. Hey, where y'all be getting these questions from, man? <laughs> man, I don't know. Probably Drake. Probably Drake. Organized or messy? Organized. I don't know why P you put who who gonna pick Messi. <laughs> yeah, no, some people it. some people do like Messi in a work environments, bro. If you look at my desk in my office, everything is everywhere. That's just the way it is. But that's yeah. organized to you though. But it's still it's messy to everybody else. Right. Yeah. I'm surprised that, was, that Devon said organized. I thought you were gonna say messy. <laughs> Man, you trying to throw him under the bus. No, huh? he just, he, he, you know, tread man mentality. They don't give a fuck. He going in. And this is the last one, vanilla or chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm I ain't answering that one. No, I ain't answering that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one that got him. What y'all on? I ain't answering that one. <laughs> hey, no. Hey, I, that's my fa- That's why I put it at the end, because you don't know what I'm Is it ice cream? Is it women? You don't know what yeah. direction, you know? Exactly. But I no. Ain't answer, no. Hey, though, on some basketball talk now, now that we got that out the way, uh, tell me about the bubble. I want to know the real, the raw. I heard a lot about the bubble. Some people was talking about it was terrible. Some people was hyping it up. So let me know your, fav- your, your favorite thing about the bubble and your least favorite thing about the bubble. The least favorite thing was the food by far. Oh, mm-hmm. so the food was okay. The food by far. It ain't, it ain't even really too much I didn't like other than the food, because it, it was just all basketball, bro, just 24-7. You got a chance to lock in for like, what was that, like a month and a half, almost two months, and you just got to lock in on strictly basketball. When you woke up, you ain't had nothing to do, nothing to, nothing to think about, but tomorrow's basketball day. Like, <laughs> what time is weights? What time the bus leave? What time? What time is practice? You feel me? Like all that, bro. What time is the meetings? Like whatever you gotta do, it wasn't nothing but basketball. And so you, prefer, me, you I was, prefer to be that way? I like, yeah, I do. Okay. Cause that's how it was set up for me in college. Right. I was just strictly basketball. So it was like, and then that's that's my that's my type of environment. I find out that I like the most. Where I get so y'all in the bubble, uh, y'all go eight and oh, you know, y'all on this high street. And y'all also in the hotels with the other teams. So y'all like hitting the lobby and then you see some people on other teams. They're like, man, you know, y'all having conversations about how hot of a team y'all are? Uh, You would just see them like in the passing for real. Mm. I'm not the type of dude. I don't really kick it with people, period. So I definitely don't kick it with like other players I'm going to play against. I feel like. I'll like, kick it with some of my teammates and we'll probably be like at a restaurant and there'd be another team in there or something. We'll just see them. Like, we'll just be like, it'll be TVs in there, though. So we'll just be watching the TV, not really, like, talking to them or nothing. Mm. When y'all was getting ready to come to the bubble, like, expectations, were y'all expecting to, like, really go 8-0? Or was this just something that just kind of, like, stunned y'all and y'all were even surprised about it? Nah, it was it was definitely our goal. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say we were stunned because that's what we was aiming for. We was trying to – because we knew that was going to probably be our only way to get in the playoffs. So we knew we had no choice but to go in there and win out. So I wouldn't say we were shocked. And we definitely thought we could do that too. We definitely thought we can go win all eight. You had uh, you had that one big game in the bubble against, uh, I think it was against Miami, right? Yeah. Uh, now you see them in the finals and everything. So what what do you think, just talk about like the basketball aspect. Why? Why do you think they had this big uptick to get to the finals when nobody expected them to? They just, they got dogs on their team, man. Jimmy Butler, he a dog. And it's like, when you got dogs on your team, bro, that that energy gonna feed off to to everybody. You know what I'm saying? To the coaching staff, to the the players who don't even play like dogs. You know what I'm saying? That's just gonna, it's gonna make them be more aggressive. It's just, you just gonna get another edge out of your teammates. And then he, they star player. And like when your star player dog, it's, that's just gonna feed off to everybody. And that's just going going with everybody else talent and all the little things that they do with their game and just giving them a a, a boost. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So do you think a team like that without like a true like go-to superstar could win win it all one day? Or do you think that teams are going to consistently need that w- number one guy? 
I think it's possible. I think it's possible for a, team like, for a team like Miami to win, man. You just you just got to start off the series on the right foot. You know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm. they they started off down 2-0. Right. Yeah. So it's it's going to be a battle fighting back, but it's still possible. But I mean, like, if they would have came out and like 1-1 or they went up 2-0, for sure. Yeah. It's just hard now that they're down 3-1. It's still possible, but it's just super tough. Uh, for real though, I, definitely when you say that like the bubble, it created that dog mentality. I think it kind of fit them and almost getting them like almost a home court advantage type of feel. And I think it kind of, you know, just boosted them through that Eastern Conference final or the Eastern Conference uh, when they went on their run. Okay, but, though. Cause the bubble heard. games is different, bro. I'm telling you. It's, a, it's different. Think about it, ain't no crowd. So like, you can't mm-hmm. really feel when it's like, when they going on a run. You know what I'm saying? It's like being an open gym and it's like, I don't know, y'all just didn't score a few times, they scored a few times. Like, right. okay, so what? Like, it's mm. still a lot of time on the clock. Like, you can get a lot of points in like two, three minutes. You know what I'm saying? Talk to yeah. us about that factor right there, right, with no fans. How, how, like, can you explain as a professional basketball player the importance or lack of importance of a crowd? Because I feel like a lot of people either overhype the importance of a crowd or they or they don't give it enough credit so when you talk about not even really feeling the energy or the vibe how much of that is playing in, in, in y'all favor or not in y'all favor through the course of the bubble when you when you was playing how important is it to you i feel like i feel like it's important man the fans the fans make it make it everything it is for real for real like mm-hmm. Think about if sports never had fans, we probably wouldn't even get paid. Mm-hmm. No, for real, yeah, hell yeah. For real, for real if wasn't nobody <laughs> interested in watching it or interested in being there or being hype, like, we probably wouldn't even get paid. It'll be like rec league. Mm-hmm. Like, don't nobody <laughs> go to the rec league games? It's like, you just going to hoop. Right. <laughs> All of the, bro, like, bro, you need that, bro. The fans give you energy. Mm-hmm. And the fans I, take away the other team's energy. That's yeah. what I was gonna say because I'm thinking back, and uh, this is when they started kind of allowing like, uh, like not even the fans, but just like people over to the games. But Russell Westbrook was getting into like Rondo brother and whatnot. Like that could have been a fan doing that type of stuff right. to the other teams, like to to Tyler Hero when he going off, or to Jason Tatum when he go. Those could have been other fans taking uh, players off their game. That's a fact. That's a fact. No, nah, for I, real though. I, I heard KD say. Ain't no asterisk to this ring. It's more. It's more respected. How you feel? Is it that you? You say the same thing? No, nah, I ain't no asterisk. What? You still gotta go out there and hoop. This is your job. At the end of the day, you doing what you've been doing, what you've been preparing to do your whole life. Like, ain't no asterisk. You still gotta go out there and win. Look, Miami in the finals. Who thought Miami would have been in the finals? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm not an answer. Because uh, they've been they they've been talking about that since the bubble started. Uh, we all had a chance to go to the bubble. We all could have not went. We all could have went. People decided to go hoop, and that's what you did. You right. go out there, you hoop. You lose, you lose. You win, you win. That's what it is. That's why I like talking to players, bro, because it's so different hearing the players' mindset than like somebody on TV that ain't actually doing this thing. Like I. I haven't seen a single player say that it's an asterisk. It's always just been the media saying it's an asterisk. The players know how tough of winning is under any circumstance. I swear. I swear, bro. You're playing against the best players in the world, bro. You got to go win. <laughs> so everybody knows Javon is an elite defender. So who is some of the toughest players you had to defend throughout the, the first couple years of your career? In the league? Yeah, in the league. <sighs> bro, that's... That list can go on and on and on for real. Right. For real, for real. I just I just named the biggest names because they are the toughest to guard because they had a ball most of the time. But like, bro, it ain't it's a lot of people tough to guard. All right. So then tell us the people that we wouldn't expect. So like me, I expect you to stay hard, right? Because yeah. number one, he got the ball, he's a superstar, and he gets the, the calls. The calls are gonna go in his favor a lot. So besides yeah. the 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 big name players. Who is somebody we we probably wouldn't expect? All right, somebody like a um, like a Patty Mills. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> hey, Patty Mills got gay. <laughs> That's funny. That man got gay, bro. I remember guarding him, bro. That man had me running all over the court. <laughs> and he was doing it when he wasn't even getting the ball. Mm. So he oh, got yeah. me just, yeah, sounds, and he not even getting the ball. I'm like, <laughs> normally it's like, okay, he doing all this running. He finna go get the ball. He finna, he finna shoot. So like, let me lock in. He just. He just to be doing it, just to be doing it. Like he might get it, he might not. He just gonna keep doing it. I'm right. like, man. People yeah. like that, bro. Like like shooters, bro. Like Duncan mm-hmm. Robinson. Mm-hmm. Like them JJ Reddick running all day long until they get the ball and get a shot. People like that is hard to guard because one mistake is like you looking at the ball, you look over, he coming off a screen, you did. Right. Mm-hmm. You get over the screen, you like, yeah, I was late. <laughs> like I was late. <laughs> he called me off guard. <laughs> Now, the shooters be the toughest to guard, though, for real. Now, how would you say, like, just defensively, how much? You, how would you say that how much is up here, like, mentally versus just being, like, physically, like, quickness and all that? Nah, bro, I feel like everybody in the league could be a lockdown defender. Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. If you got the ability to be in the league, you got the ability to, to lock up. It's just that whether you choose – to lock up or you choose to get buckets? Like, which one do you choose? It's right. like, most people gonna be like, ah, I go in here and work on my offense every day. This is what yeah. I want to do that, like. I feel that, that's what I tend to do. Maybe. Would you agree? Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't ever go in the gym and work on defense, ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell, hey. Me I, neither. I, just, I went to one of his workouts about, what, what, how long ago was that, Javon? That was like three Couple weeks, weeks ago. Right? Yeah, and yeah, you ain't lying. I ain't see ever food. You ain't see me do one thing <laughs> on no, defense. No defensive slides on nothing. <laughs> Not a back paddle, nothing, bro. Nothing. No defense. So what is it like defending the dudes who you know going like you know before the game that they gonna be flopping and using antics to try to get the ref's attention and try to get those calls on you? Bro, for real, for real, I ain't figured it out. Mm. Mm. I ain't been in the league long enough. You feel me? I ain't figured it out, bro. That's I, ain't, an I ain't played as much as I as I as I need to to figure that out, bro. Because mm. every game be different. Like dudes, like bro, that flopping stuff is out of control. I be watching the games, bro. <laughs> I see people flopping off of like the dumbest stuff. Yeah, right? that don't make sense, bro. Like. I seen somebody, man, I can't remember who it was, bro. Somebody threw him a bad pass. <laughs> so he had to jump up and like stretch for the ball, bro. But when he caught it, he flopped. But nobody was by him. Literally <laughs> nobody on the court. Not his teammate, not a defender, nobody. I was like, did he just flop? I was like, wow, it's really instilled in these dudes to like flop almost any chance you get. That's a conversation that y'all be having amongst each other as teammates. Like, bro, did you just see this motherfucker flop? Bro. Bro, it like, not for real, bro. Cause it gets to the point to where it be like, everybody doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they all doing it. Like, bro, I don't know, bro. That's Do you think it I takes know. away from the game? Do you think it takes away from the actual like concept of the game? 100%. Mm. Especially, it just, especially the fouls where like you're not even really trying to score, you just trying to get a foul. Right. Mm. Those are the worst ones to me. Like it's all cool when you like trying to get to the bucket. Somebody stick their arm out, they might foul you going to shoot it, but you just driving and you just gonna go hit their arm and you might throw the ball out of bounds, but just because they call a foul, it's like mm. wow. That, that's why I don't be getting when people be complaining so much about the refs. Like I know the refs be doing, you know, they be making bad calls. Like it's gonna happen to a human. But it, the players themselves be putting so much pressure on the refs, too, that, I mean, the refs be in a hard spot. And then it's like that right there moment, too. So they got a, they got a ref, they got a ref us acting and not just mm-hmm. refing basketball. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's yeah. like, they got to see, like, oh, is he acting or was that a real foul? Like, I can't tell. Is he mm-hmm. a good actor or was that a real foul? Like, mm-hmm. Is you putting them in a tough situation. It'd be mm-hmm. hard for anybody to make that call, make that decision. That's why I don't even really, well, for the most part, I try not to get mad at the refs. Like, I get mad at the refs for calling calls when they be acting. Right. Like, you know what I mean? I don't get mad at the ref for calling a foul when I foul somebody. But it's like, bro, I touched him. I didn't foul him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, put, I touched him, but I didn't foul him, bro. It's a, it's a difference. No, and I, I, and I know it's super frustrating for you because you guard guys who – 
got names. So they trying to they they, they go on rough tours them. Like you guard the Hardens, the Lucas, and they do you do you believe in superstar calls? Is that is, you, would you say that that's real? Because we hear about that a lot. Like superstars gonna get the calls. Yeah, and I ain't trying to get you in trouble, I but <laughs> I I wouldn't say it like that. I would just say like they just get a lot of calls in their favor. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like. I mean, they got the ball a lot, so like they they get a lot of attention. So like James Harden would get more calls than I do with the ball because I don't have the ball as much as he do. Right. So it's like maybe he is getting fouled more. Yeah. Plus, I mean, he been work, he been doing it for so long. Like he knows how to work the refs and how to get that contact. And so it's like back to what you said. Like you ain't been in the league long enough. Like he been exactly. in the league doing that more more than you've been exactly. in the league just just exactly. playing. So it's like he already gonna know. He already gonna know everything you trying to do to not not foul him. So it's like it's you just gotta. It's come with experience, man. Right. Come with experience, right, bro. I feel like that's the only way to learn that. You gotta be in it. And James mm. Harden know how to do it, and that's why he keep doing it. Right, it works for him. It's mm. working. I wouldn't stop doing it either if I was him. Mm. It worked. It worked. He like especially when you get like ten to twelve free throws a game. Yeah. Yeah, that's like I could have thirty on the off night. And he do. He do. <laughs> 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 bro, it's crazy, bro. That man probably shot more free throws this season than I did in all my field goals in both years. All the free throws, probably all my rebounds, assists, probably all the numbers added up. He probably shot more free throws in one season. Nah, mm. that that is wild. Now, outside of scoring, who is the best def- the best defender in the league besides you? Because I know you'll probably see yourself. <laughs> I already know how you cover. <laughs> well, besides okay. like Kawhi Leonard, I know a lot of people are gonna say Kawhi Leonard. Best defender, bro. I've been watching these playoffs. I've been watching AD a lot. Mm. AD, AD can guard, bro. He yeah. can guard any position, bro. They putting him on Jimmy Butler, and he doing good, bro. It's hard not to say AD for real. Because right. he ain't just no help side defender. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He guarding the ball. Like, he guarding the dudes who who he know finna get the ball every possession. Mm-hmm. That was one of my arguments for him. To get defensive player of the year, because I feel like like Giannis, Giannis like, ain't want to take that yeah, challenge, man. Giannis the help side. He getting a lot of blocks. He's doing a lot of helping. But as far as one-on-one, Giannis ain't the guy you putting on whoever eating you alive. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that was my put argument. Put him on the help so he could clean everything yeah. up. We saw it in the playoffs when he went guarding Jimmy. Um, Drew, Drew yeah. Holiday. Bro, and that's one Dort. of my favorite defenders to watch, man. Lou Dor too. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like the defenders in the league, and it's like the defender defenders, the ones that get after you, and like you don't even want to dribble the ball around them. Bro, like the dudes. Doing? Who else? Oh, Avery Bradley. Mm. Yeah, man, he ain't come oh, from Yeah. I like Ben like, Simmons, too. Ben be, be can guard one through five for real, for real. I know they try to. I ain't never really mm. watched Ben for real, so I don't okay. really know. And then I only played him, what, once? I only played against Philly once this year, mm-hmm. so. Mm. Marcus Smart definitely him. turned up in this bubble with his defense. Like, I mean, he was already a good defender, but his stuff was, like, off the charts. Like, you he say Marcus carrying, Smart? Marcus, yeah. He was, like, carrying their defense at times. Oh, that's Which why I didn't cool. say Mark Smart. I'm like, that's a no brainer. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, that's the cool thing because, like, I mean, they remind you, me of each other, right? Yeah, because like, they're not the biggest dudes on the court, or like the the six they eight small boys. <laughs> me and Mark Smart, yeah, y'all do kind of got that similar defensive tenacity. I I, I rock with Mark Smart, bro, for real. Nah, yeah, Mark. Except the only thing I say is, like you like you said, when you foul somebody, it's whatever. Mark now, Mark is a poke your eye and be like. <laughs> what did I do? He found somebody. <laughs> what did I do? Nah. Hey, nah. <laughs> hey, he be having me weak. <laughs> I said, don't never think he found somebody. <laughs> no, I, I, I found him. I just be like, yeah. You, you heard that? You ain't see that. You don't even know where I found him at. I'm like, you just assuming. They just be guessing. Like, hey, that's what. what that's why I like talking to the refs though, because they they really got a sense of humor, bro. They be cracking me up. Oh, for real? I swear to God, bro. They they really be talking on the low. Y'all just can't hear it. But they be oh. talking, bro. They funny, too. I be like, man, you know I ain't touch him. He be like, man, he was off balance. He said, look like you fouled him. <laughs> I said, look like it. 
<laughs> it looked like it. <laughs> so you, you've played for a few different teams. Um, have you had like a one of the vets in one of those locker rooms turn into like a mentor? Uh, Mike Conley. Mike Conley. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mike, I was talking to Mike about any and everything. Mm. And my locker was right next to him, so we was just always just chopping it up. Right. Do you think coaches try to do that on purpose where they bring their rookies in and they try to put them like their lockers near vets to where they can actually like develop that relationship? I think, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's some logic to it. Mm. Mm-hmm. How, how much, how important, I don't want to say important because obviously it's important. Every team got one, but coaching like KB Kenny, he had talked to Blake Griffin and Blake Griffin was saying to him, coaching is just balancing egos. Like a lot, it's it's overthought. Like people look at coaching like they, you know, they got all these answers or anything, but really it's kind of babysitting. <clears throat> Low key, I wouldn't say babysitting, but like it's <laughs> it's more like it's like teaching. You know what I'm saying? It's like certain teachers teach certain classes differently. You know what I'm saying? It's like you may have English class one year. Somebody calling. <laughs> what it says. What happened to the thing? Can you see us? Nah, can y'all see me? Yeah, yeah. We'll see yeah. You. I don't know what happened. Hey, how? <laughs> oh, he lagged out. Oh, yeah, I can see me. Oh, wait, no, oh, you back. You back. You back. All right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I was saying, what we talking Coaching. About? Coaching. Baby. Yeah. Bro, he like, bro, I don't know, bro. Money different, bro. That man, like, he like a preacher for real. Mm-hmm. Like I was talking about teaching. It's like you go to class, teachers teach a certain way. And you go to church, preachers preach a certain way, bro. Mm-hmm. He like a preacher, bro. Mm-hmm. He be like, y'all, that might work. You be sitting there listening to him like it might work. Like, <laughs> it was like it might work. So I'm at least try. It, you know, what I mean? yeah, see definitely. what happens. Like, some coaches can't can't give you that. Like, even if they wrong, you still gonna try. It. Cause, but you like, bro. I know this ain't gonna work. Mm-hmm. So like, why would I do that? <laughs> he make you think like whatever he tell you, it might work. So just try it. Right. You know what I'm saying then if it don't work, he we figure something else out. That's what I like about him. A lot of coaches just be like, bro, do what I tell you. If it don't work, it don't work. Oh, well, like, do what mm-hmm. I tell you. Mm-hmm. He ain't like that. He's different. Is there a, you think like, coaches should, like, more so, like, listen to the players' advice in these situations where they, like, say something and, like, players, like, get them that dialogue back saying, like, hey, this might not work. Bro, like, we should do- you say that. I got, like, instances from this year where he's done that, bro. Like, some – he had be talking about something. I remember it was one time, was it in the bubble? It might have been in the bubble. He's showing like, he's showing somebody how to guard a certain action. And I'm like, I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, yeah, it could work. But I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I got something I think will work a little better. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, just just hit me out, coach. Just, just let me try it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I raised my hand. I stopped the film. I'm like, hey. I see what you're saying, and I do think it could work. I'm like, but I think I got a way that we could even stop him from getting the ball. Because I'm all about, like, guarding dudes that's, like, ball heavy and ball dominant, like, just trying to put the ball in their hand less as possible. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm like, okay, we know when he run this play, they only set up in this formation when they run this play for him this only way. You feel me? Like, it don't be no other options. So I'm just like, just put this guy, back him off, and just let me shoot this gap, and I promise you he won't get the ball. Hmm. We did it. It worked. I looked at him. He like, he just nodded his head. I'm like, I told you. Like, I, I told you I thought it was going to work. And then he just like, like, he let me, like, like he let me try. Most hmm. coaches would have been hmm. like, nah, nah, just do it this way. Then right. I would have been like, okay, but now – the defense don't get real until after he catches the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm already at a disadvantage because he's a superstar. So if I touch him, it's going to be a foul. 
So the best way to guard him is to guard him before he even touch it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, by that time, you telling me to just guard him with the ball. Now I'm already smaller than him. So I'm like, I'm already at a disadvantage again. I'm like, nothing is in my favor. Now. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, let me let me guard it to where it's in my favor. And he let me try it and it worked. I was like, he trusts me. But like, it, it, it took a minute before I, before I got his trust, but I definitely did get it though. Now, is there like another voice in the locker room besides Monty? As far as coaches or like no nah, player wise or teammate wise, yeah, man, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, D H, everybody, Kelly, we all. Oh, so it's like a group committee thing, like y'all. Like, all yeah, we like one of them teams where it's like it ain't like no leader. It's just mm-hmm. like certain guys we look to in certain situations. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying like if it's like a defensive thing, or like we need to get hype, they looking at me. You know what I'm saying? If it's like Ricky run the team, we looking at Ricky like, what we finna do? Book, you know we need a basket. <laughs> we looking at Book, what we need? You feel me? It's like, we need to pick up the rebound and the screens. We looking at the bigs. It's like, it's like everything balanced. Yeah, I rock with that. I think that worked out the best when every, everybody can hold each other accountable. And most importantly, just everybody know they roll. You know, yeah. nobody trying to go outside themselves and do too much. I think that's the best thing about y'all team that I love mm-hmm. this past year. Like, y'all got a bunch of dudes who just, like, from what I know, you know what I mean? Because, obviously, I don't know everybody on that team personally. But from what I see <laughs> and what I know about everybody, everybody just cool and just play their part. Like, Rubio, yeah, he's just a floor general. So, he going, you know, he do that. You obviously bring in a D. And then later in the season, especially in the bubble, I, you know, we seeing you kind of be that guy for them defensively. Um, you know, D book, he, 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 he a score. And from what I see, he cool as a cucumber. Oubre, <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> Kelly hyped him over. You don't know. He, he going to come in with purple. Yeah. Dread, like, you know what I'm saying? He a rock star painted nails. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Aaron Baines, big muscle. Sounds ready amazing, to knock somebody man. out. So yeah, I, I love the dynamic of y'all team, especially at the end, man, especially at the end. Cameron Payne started hooping. Bro, uh, everybody. You know, Ooh, bro, like everybody just mad cool. Like Mikhail, Cam, Ty, everybody, bro. Everybody just be chilling for real. Book, everybody just be chilling, bro. Nah, that's what's Only up. Only one be hype is me, Kelly, and DA. It's <laughs> 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 it's one of us three for sure. <laughs> if you hear any noise, it's probably coming from one of us three. Everybody else just be chilling, bro. Mm. Everybody can talk to everybody like. Everybody take the constructive criticism. Mm. You you got like a um I don't want to say favorite teammate, but you got somebody. It could be this team or or the Grizzlies that click. Like no matter what happened, that's your boy. Or like y'all got a bond that's bigger than basketball. I know it's still early. Yeah, facts, facts. I got that with a few people though. Like like a couple people from the Grizzlies. I'm still mad cool with. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm like, I'm like one of them teammates that like, I just be cool with everybody, bro. Mm, I, don't really, I don't never really have no beef with nobody for real. But be, beefs do be going on though. Great, bro. I don't never want to take no shine away from nobody, bro. Right. If you hoping, you hoping. Like, why would I ever hate on that? Yeah. I'm always just gonna be like. Okay, I'm a I'm a hoop eventually. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm we, hoop we now. I'm a hoop eventually, like. Your shine ain't got nothing to do with me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to still be able to get mine. Like, we can both get it together. Like, <laughs> I just want to see everybody eat, bro. That's why I'm just, I'm just always happy for whoever eat, no matter what. How much do the, the players uh, watch or care about, like, the TV shows that talk about y'all all day? What you talking about? Like, like the sports <laughs> shows. Uh, do people tune in to, like, you know what I'm saying? Because, you, you know, I'm talk- for example, like the Stephen A. Smiths of the world, do y'all care? What, what he got to say about anything, or y'all just out there just purely hooping? Be, be, be real. Keep it a buck. I, I don't never really watch TV during the season, so I don't never see that stuff. Right. When I'm watching, I'm only watching, like, the game. Mm. Like, I'm just watching film. Like, in the bubble, I probably didn't turn my TV on for, like, two or three weeks. I was just on the on the iPad on the laptop just watching film. Right. And I watch them, or, like, I'll just be watching Netflix or something, YouTube. Other than that, like I don't even really, so I don't even really get a chance to hear what they be saying. I feel you. No, that, I don't that, be on Twitter. 
That so, answered the question in itself. If they were saying anything that was important or that you wanted to know, you'll be watching them. So the fact that you don't, it, Man, it, it, they just yeah. Like their opinion don't really mean nothing. It ain't like, right. oh, Stephen A said this, and then, oh, they benched Javon Carter now. <laughs> <Right>. Like, <laughs> boy, he just, he's just another person just up there just talking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> to do it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so being from Chicago, bro, I wanted to ask you, are you going Uncle Remus or Harold's? <laughs> I'll probably go to Harold's for sure. Hey, oh, no, look no. at you. Hey, that's what's up, bro. That's what's up, bro. Bro, P, didn't Derek say that he admitted that Uncle Remus was better than Harold? No. Yeah. No, 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 I had it once, and I wanted to give it another shot before I made my decision. I ain't had Uncle Remus in a minute. Which is crazy, because the crib right back. No, it's one right there. <laughs> hey, I don't know why. I don't know. I ain't really going to Uncle Remus like that. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. See, what? We was going to, like, J.J. Fish and Sharp and stuff. Facts. So I wasn't even really going to too much Harold's neither. Like I ain't really start going to Harold's till I start moving other places, and then I would see a Harold's chicken. I'm right. Like, the closest thing to Chicago. Okay. I re- I respect that answer, then. Cause you ain't you. It ain't really neither then. Yeah, like in Chicago, I don't really eat Harold's or Uncle Remus. Right. Oh, okay. So what's your go-to cheat meal? Now listen, Javon. Before you answer this, right? <laughs> About a week ago, we was talking to Spencer Dinwiddie. He <laughs> asked him the same question. The man Spencer Dinwiddie said his sheet meal is a waffle. Just a waffle. Plain ass <laughs> waffle. waffle. I'm hoping you don't tell me your cheat meal is a fucking waffle. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was mind blowing. I didn't know if he was if he was just talking shit to us or like and he ain't uh, supposed uh, to be saying, but a waffle is wild. No, nah, he was serious. That, about that just that. mean his diet probably crazy. Yeah. He probably just eat all the right thing at every moment. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't switched over to professional eating yet. Right. I know. I'm about, I- about 60% there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. We went to that workout. Yo, ass said, y'all want to go to home run in? <laughs> home run in. I'm looking for a cheat code right away. <laughs> Hey, that was one of them days, you feel me? I ain't gonna eat home run in who knows how long. Probably another year. Like, right. You know? right. I'm like, I could pass that up. No, nah, I feel it. I feel it. What's the what's the biggest misconception about Javon Carter's game? Everybody know you as a defender, but what's something about your game that don't get enough credit in your opinion? Hey man, I don't care what people give me credit for. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know what I can do, and I ain't really trying to prove to nobody else. What I can do. See, you see that I got it, and you think I got it, or you see that I don't have it, and you think I ain't got it. Right. I just leave it at that. If you think I can't shoot, you think I can't shoot. If you think I can't score, you think I can't score. If you think I can't pass, you think I can't pass. You feel me? Like, that's just what it is. You think I can't go left, that's just your opinion. So you 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 prefer that. You really you really want to be that underdog boy that, that no matter what, that's who you're going to be. Yeah. I ain't sure. What would you say is like the key to like really for those like second round guys who ain't heavily recruited? Like, what would you say is the key for them to like come in and like really like stand out amongst the crowd? Uh, well, you got to be a good teammate. You know what I'm saying? You got to be. You can't come in there with that I'm the man like persona. That's portrayed when they say like superstars don't really be good teammates. They, you feel me? They don't be talking to their teammates and all this and all that. It's like definitely don't come in here with that mindset, thinking it's like you just mad at everybody because you ain't getting the minutes you want. That ain't gonna get you nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying so, you might as well just enjoy every moment of it because they took you in the second round. So it's like they took a chance on you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like I think. So, yeah. it, it, yeah, I think that's just got to be the mindset, right? And if that's your mindset, then you you in a good spot because that means that you know you still got to work hard. You're going to be humble. You're going to know you got to be a good teammate and everything and, and whatnot. So, I mean, as long as you got that mentality, I think it's just that's just the right way to go. But I, I think also, too, a lot of y'all are, are killing that, that uh, what's the word, 
that stigma about like four year players. Facts. Like so, you got you, Fred Van Fleet, mm-hmm. uh, Draymond Green, Jalen uh, Brunson. Brunson. No, I think he was three. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, well, I'm just thinking three. about the older. Uh, Dame Lillard, C.J. McCollum, Harris Levert. Who? Devontae Graham. Devontae Dante, Graham. Yeah. Brogdon. Uh, Covington, Joe Harris. Right, because because uh, you didn't go in the second round because people didn't think you can hoop. It's just like they always want to get the younger guys for some reason, and it's improving over and over. That like especially with the guards, them four year, three year guards come in and they can actually hoop. Yeah, y'all be ready to go from the get go. Ain't no yeah. really development or nothing. I mean, y'all might have to get used to the, the speed of the game for the most. But like nineteen year old, eighteen year old point guards, they don't have a clue about come in, shit. Doodle. Can't guard a pick and roll, don't know how to run it. But y'all coming in like shit. I done seen this for four years. Like the four years you was at West Virginia, you wasn't playing against no motherfucking uh, robots or no motherfucking like you was playing against the same niggas that's in it. Trey Youngs and Devontae yep. Grant. Like you, you, playing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I like as a four year guy, I, I I just wanted to know your mindset when you hear like this stigma against the four year players. Like y'all some fucking uh, dinosaurs coming in. <laughs> When oh like we oh <laughs> I like, literally got a list in front of me of guys who any all thirty teams would take four year guys the name the names we just named who ain't what team ain't taking Buddy Hill right now what team ain't taking Brogdon what te- I I searched your name on Twitter and all these fans of different teams are saying they they hope they, they team get you man as long as we sign him and then we get Javon shit we good like I it's not many four year players that. That that stay that stay in the league and that that don't really do shit. I, I can't really name. I mean, I don't want to name one that's obvious, but you know, a, a lot of y'all come in and y'all be ready to hoof from the get go. Oh, well, that's like um, what I was gonna say. It's just funny to hear like people from other teams talking about me, bro. Because after my rookie year, bro, I wasn't hearing nothing from nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They like, yo, we knew he wasn't going to plan. We knew he wasn't going to pan out in the league. Like, he definitely, I'm like, man. Nah. You know, I, you know. Like, I don't be listening to none of that, bro. It's all just people's opinion, bro. I'm like, I ain't listening to none of y'all. No, because you know, Auntie, she be replying to everybody. She so. be- that's the only reason I know about it. People <laughs> hit me up like, yo, your mom, woo, woo. I'm like, she talking. I'm like, I'm hitting her up like, would you stop talking back to these people? <laughs> <laughs> they go say it and say it and never not say it. Yep. I'm like, so just stop. I'm she like, do you know it. people don't like LeBron James? <laughs> it's a lot of LeBron James haters, bro. And I'm like, ma, LeBron James, they don't like him. <laughs> of course, they're going to be people that don't like me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Come on, man. She show be on it. She don't take a day off. She don't, bro. She be going back at everybody. I'll be like, man, you wasted. Do y'all think? Do you think people hate on LeBron because he's the closest thing to challenge the Jordan legacy? I don't know why people hate on LeBron. People hate on LeBron because they got a certain narrative in their mind. You still going, KB? No, yeah, yeah. I'm still rolling. You want me to react to the question? Yeah, react to the question, d so, you, Your answer was finna be five. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think people hate on LeBron's legacy because he's the closest thing to really, like, challenge Jordan's legacy? Man, for real, for real, bro. I don't know why people hate on LeBron, bro. I really don't, like. How could you hate on that man, bro? I just feel like, like, people just think he should be a certain way in their mind. And like, when he's not exactly how they picture it, they just be like, nah, like he's supposed to be like this. or he's supposed mm-hmm. to be like that. It's like, instead of just liking him for LeBron James, they just like kind of wanting him to have like Michael Jordan's mentality in LeBron James's body. Right. Like, bro, it's a whole different person. He got a whole different mindset. He played a game different. So he don't, he don't play like that. Like, if he wanted to, he could probably get 40 every night if he tried. But he just would rather be like a point guard. You know what I'm saying? He just God gifted. So we just want him to just dominate, just score 50. Like every night, it's like, bro, that ain't how he was taught to play basketball. Like, 
it's just crazy, bro. How can you not like LeBron, bro? What does the man do wrong? <laughs> it seems like when you at the top, people just want to see you fall. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. It's like, oh, he's so great. So we just mm -hmm. go hate him just cause. Right. <laughs> and that's what I think a lot of people actually do. Is they always look for what people are not instead of just recognizing them for what they is. And it, it sucks because they they only they love to recognize it once it's too late. Once LeBron is gone, you're gonna see all hey, the coming stuff. That's that that's that old school. I was just on the phone with my pops yesterday and he was talking about LeBron. He wasn't saying nothing bad, but he they always go back to that Jordan. And I was telling Pops, like, bro, ain't nothing wrong with not being Jordan. Like, we need to cut the fucking <laughs> mindset that you have to be this motherfucking killer. Like, ain't nothing wrong with making the right play on basketball. Like, we can't we can't be faulting people for making the right play. Cause you and when they play say it, like, like uh, Jordan didn't have people on his team that hit big shots to help save his legs. Mm. Yeah, Steve, it's a coach out there in Golden State that hit one. John Paxson right. won game yeah, six, I, I, 1994. I feel like LeBron the only player that just can't get help. If he get help, there's something wrong with it. Like, he just yeah. not doing it. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, it's like right. nobody they wants to revisit the history, right? Nobody going to go back to watch those. Bro, they want LeBron to win with, like, all D3 players. <laughs> it's like, okay, now he deserves it. Like, Thanks. it's like they don't want that man to have nobody on his team at all. Right. Who can help him do anything? It's like all his players supposed to miss every shot. Like they're not supposed to do nothing. I'm like, I think bro. that shit unfair to put anybody next to Jordan too, because you're competing with perfect. Like six and zero in the finals, you you can't beat perfect. Perfect is unbeatable. That was my problem with y'all too in the bubble. I know they had rules in place, but in my mind, ain't no way in hell a team go undefeated and don't get a chance. Yeah. Hey, I don't know, bro. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to bring up the past because I know you, you yeah, probably I don't know what to say, man. <laughs> it was hurt. That, yeah, that 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 shit, that shit was a little wild to me, man. That shit, that shit was super wild. Who was your favorite player growing up? I can't, I can't remember when we was kids. I don't know who you liked. I just know you like Space Jam. Bulls. He said Rose. D Rose. D -Rose. Oh, D Rose. <laughs> Man, everybody I, I love them some D Rose, bro. Yeah, I don't know how you could not love D Rose, man. It's impossible. It's yeah. impossible. Just the humble as that. How can you not like D Rose, bro? <laughs> bro, I want. Players got everything you want. Bro, one of the funniest stories I heard is when I, we, it was me and Derek, and we was at a gym, and a dude was trying to. He was getting ready to run fools, and dude was like, "Man, let me find some anger so I can play harder with that." He was like, man, I was on a D-Rose fan page this morning and somebody was hating on D-Rose. Like, how the hell is he on a D-Rose fan page talking shit about it? <laughs> <laughs> like, the people that love D-Rose, they rap for D-Rose, though. Okay. It, but it's also very rare you hear people talking shit about D-Rose. If they do, it's just about his injuries. Literally. It's never really about his game. No, you can't say nothing about the game because the game was MVP. Yeah. Right. That was it. Facts. Youngest ever. Youngest mm -hmm. ever. Hmm. That's crazy, bro. You think about all of the Michael Jordans, the LeBrons, the Kobe's, but bros won MVP at mm. the youngest? Mm. <laughs> For the crib. For the exactly. crib in Chicago, what? what? He rolls everywhere, bro. That's what I'm saying. People just gotta take stuff for what it is, man. You always comparing something to like the perfect. You can't control every, you can't, you know, compare every rapper to Drake. Not everybody going to be basically perfect like Jordan or something like that. You got to understand it for what it is to get like the full the full recognition of it, man. Facts. We got to stop comparing stuff, bro. Just appreciate greatness. Pre appreciate everything. That's a fact. I, I just hate that people was mad at D-Rose for some shit he couldn't control. He can't control his body. That's mm -hmm. dumb as hell. Yeah. That's the stupidest shit I ever heard. You mad at him over, like he want his, his, his fucking knee to be Facts. there. Like, like he want to get hurt. Like, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Who the hell wants to get hurt? You got a um, you got a welcome to the NBA moment. What you mean? Like, you know what I mean? You find you 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 rookie, you get to the league, you and your you're in a game, whatever, and you like, damn, Joe, this motherfucking LeBron or <laughs> like how like how Tyler Hero just had his in the in the finals when LeBron bulldozed through him and dumped. That was his welcome to the moment. That's what you think? I, I think it had to be. No, 
he ain't get all the way to the finals and not had a welcome to the NBA. Yeah, right. I forgot who told the story. It was one of it was one NBA player. He's like, man, it was one of them nights, and some, it was a player that gave me like thirty six and ten. He was like, it was Bano Udre, and he's like, that's how you know that you just can't take no players. Like you can't can't underestimate nobody in the NBA. Hey, you know who uh, Blake Griffin said his was Zach Randolph. He was oh. like, man, first time banging with Zach Randolph, I had bruises all over my body. I never <laughs> went to play against him again. My moment probably was uh, probably Steph Curry. Mm. Steph I, Curry. He, um, I couldn't even think about guarding that man. <laughs> I was chasing him, coming off screens. I'm playing good D, right? On the last one, he get me. He come off the screen. When he catch it, I'm right there, though. He pump fake. I jumped. Uh, <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would. Hey, out of it, everything. He tapped me on my butt. Welcome to the league, Rook. <laughs> it was my second game too. It was in Golden State. Mm-hmm. You had a good game against them. Thirty that year, right? Game. You had 30. 30. That was at the end. He ain't played though. Oh, he won that that game. Oh. He don't play, so I don't really like it for real. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? He won out there. Steph and Steph and KD. I mean, Clay, uh, Clay and KD was, but Steph won out there. Right. Do you have key matchups that you look forward to that you be like, yeah, I'm I'm ready to go against him? Yeah, I got a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I got a lot of those. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure. So he's been, tra- you've been traded. When you've been traded, you probably, whoever traded, in my mind, when a player been traded, y'all all circle that team that traded y'all on that calendar. At, for the rest of y'all career, I, it, it, Ten years from now, <clears throat> Grizz is coming up. Okay. <laughs> bro, no, nah, what's crazy about that is, bro, it's like, I don't know. Because I can't really be mad at them, for real, because they drafted me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they got me in the dough. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of teams that, that didn't draft me, you know? Right. You feel me? Yeah. I was mad I got traded, but I was I was still happy at the same time. How did what's you it, find it out? Like, though? Yeah, how did you find out? I got a, uh, people love to hear this one, don't they? <laughs> no, the reason I, uh, is because so many players have different stories. It'd be mind blowing when people, when they, when y'all found out like we do. And, and it's crazy because like no other profession is like that. We not going to get traded from House of Highlights to ESPN. So like, it's like something that's only players go through. So we was in the, um, it was after the rookie year, summer league. We, we was in Salt Lake City. We had like a little mini summer league there before we went to Vegas. We there, we played one game. Who we play? I forget who we played. We beat them. We go back next day, boom, go to a little breakfast, putting on my uniform, get back to the room, putting on my uniform to go down and watch film. Like I put on everything. The last thing I had to put on was my jersey. Right when I picked up the jersey, my phone started ringing. Look at the phone, it's an unknown number from Illinois. So I answered, cause I'm like, oh, this might be somebody I know back at the crib, you feel me? So I'm, I answered, he said, hello. He said, yeah, this is Zach. I'm like, Zach. <laughs> I don't know no Zachs. I'm like, who is that? He like, yeah, the new uh, the new uh, GM for the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm like, yeah, I didn't even know we had a new GM. But I knew they said they had fired the old GM, but I didn't know we had got a new one. Right. So he said, he the new GM. I'm like, oh. So when he said that, I'm like, what you calling me for? Right. Like, what do you want with me? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, what's up? He's like, yeah, unfortunately, we got some bad news. We just traded you to the Phoenix Suns. Damn. I ain't said a word for like a minute. I'm like, he, but cause he was still talking though. Mm-hmm. Oh. So he like, he's he going. After that, I don't really know what he was saying for real, for real. So I don't know if he was talking or not. I think he was talking, but I was just like, he like, hello, you there? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I'm like, so what that means? So, so now what? He like, nothing. he said, we just want to thank you. You feel me for being a, you know, a great professional. He started giving me the rundown and all that. I'm like, so what's next? Like, I just stay in Salt Lake? Like, what What now? Yeah. He like, they gonna call you in a few minutes when we get off the phone. I'm like, all right, we hang up. I tell him like, thank you for the opportunity and all that. Again, I'm sitting there looking at my phone. 
<laughs> I'm sitting there looking. Bro, nothing. Nothing. 30 minutes go by. Nothing. No, after the 30 minute mark, that's when I get an ESPN alert saying Javon Carter just been traded to the mm. Phoenix Suns. I'm like, I'm in the alerts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hold on. All right, so boom. So now I'm just sitting there looking at all the stuff, Instagram, Twitter. That's what I was on Twitter looking for real. Right. I'm looking at everything. I'm like, I'm really, I'm really gone. It's over with. Like, no more Memphis. Then I got my teammates calling me like, yo, we in film, where you at? I'm like, nah, I won't be there, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got traded. They like, man, you playing. They like, come on, bro, we finna start. I'm like, I ain't gonna make it, bro. Mm. I can't even tell you, like, I ain't gonna make it. That ass. I'm like, yeah, bro. So it. <laughs> then hours go by, still don't hear nothing. I'm yeah. like, bro, what's going on? I'm like, did I get waved or something? I'm like, ain't nobody hitting me up telling me what's next. So I'm just sitting there doing nothing, bro. Like, I think it was like after the six, the six hour mark, James Jones finally called me. And so he told me, he like, yeah, he breaking down the spill to me or whatever. He was like, he was like, don't get it twisted now. He said, we ain't trade you because we just needed you for room. You feel me? We just needed to fill a roster spot. He said, we trade you because we really wanted you. I'm lucky. I'm like. <laughs> now I'm mad. I don't, I don't believe nothing nobody's saying. Now I don't right. care what you talking about. Right. I'm just mad. Now I'm like, man, I hear you. Mm-hmm. Sound good. Then, then I asked before we get off the phone. I ain't really say much. Before we got off the phone, he asked me, he's like, you got any questions? I said, I got one question for you. I said, how much would I be having to play in the G League? Hmm. That was killing me. Rookie year going up and down literally every day. Because we practice in the same gym. So I was practicing with two teams every day. Memphis Hustle, right? Memphis Hustle and the Memphis Grizzlies. I was practicing with both teams. Or if, if one of them had a game, I would practice with one of them and play in the game that same day with the next team. It was like, it was killing me. Flying from state to state, going from G League to NBA games, literally day after day after day. I remember, bro, I had a 12, no, nah, 14 day span where I played 12 games. Damn. Either in the G League or either in the NBA. I remember I had only had two days off and the two days off was cause I was flying all day. Like I couldn't get a direct flight. So I had to take like a connecting flight or something. And I'm G League games be everywhere, don't they? Don't they? Idaho yeah, and shit bro. like that. I'm going yeah. from like South Dakota, coming to Orlando, then going to LA, then going to Oklahoma City. I'm like, bro, I'm just going all over the place. Going to Stockton, California. <laughs> bro, then going to Utah. I'm like, man, I'm just all over the place, bro. Mm. That shit was crazy. But I asked him, I'm like, how, how much I got to play in the GD? He like, he like, none. Mm. He like, unless you wanted to just go down on your own because you felt like you weren't playing enough. Mm. I'm like, <laughs> every time, every time he's saying something to me, I'm just not buying it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, you not. I'm like, that is not the truth. Because I'm like, I just played probably half of the season in the G League my rookie year. So I'm like, so you don't think I got to play at all in the G League? Because I'm like, it ain't like I was playing half in the G and then went to a league and was hooping. I wasn't doing nothing <laughs> at all. I'm like, ain't no way what I did in the NBA to improve that I that I should be playing in the league. So I'm like, I know for a fact I'm going to be in the G League at least a little bit. He's like, nah. I'm like. Hey, they took a chance. You feel right. me? And he kept his word. I ain't go down to the G League at all. It was it was times where I thought they was gonna hit me with the yeah, it's about time for you to get up out of here, my boy. But <laughs> they never did. I was like, Whoo. hey, that's just what I was wondering. They like, JC, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Looking at him, you finna tell me to go to the G League, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> he never said. I'm like, thank you, bro. Hey, never said. No, that's that's what's up. I, I, that's part of the game that we don't really even get to hear about. Like 
what you're saying right now, a few other players might watch this or see that clip and be like, man, he ain't lying. I'm doing that right now. Right. Yeah. We don't see that part. We just see called up, called down. I, I don't know that you're playing 12 and 14 days. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's ridiculous. That sounds crazy. And it wasn't like I was, like, playing, playing. You feel me? I'm playing a lot in the G to go with the Grizzlies. I might get in for a few minutes. I might not play at all. Then they might play me 25. I'm like, hold on. What's, what's going on? <laughs> Bro, it was, bro, I swear, bro. I like, I don't think I would ever really like struggle like that for real in the league. Cause I don't, I don't had it. I don't had it as worse as you can have it, bro. Mm -hmm. Literally as worse as you can have it. I'm like, bro, it can't get no worse than that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's worse than that? I'm like, I'm not playing. We practicing. I'm barely getting any reps in practice cause, cause they like prepare for games and stuff. So I'm like, I'm really not getting in. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, now what? Who is the first? I don't know what's going on when I'm out there? Cause it's like you can tell me what to do, but it's different than being out there. You still gotta go get a feel for it. Right. Who was the first player you um you talked with from the Suns when you were traded? If you can remember, shit. First player. I ain't talked to nobody for real. Hmm. I was still mad, bro. Still went trying to get nothing. I wasn't. I, I was mad too. Yeah, the first, real. the first people I ran into was um, uh, Cam Johnson, Mikael Bridges, and uh, Ty Jerome. Okay. I ran into him at the summer league because Cam, Cam, and Ty had just got traded. Or oh, no, Ty got. I mean, they had just got drafted, mm -hmm. and then Mikael was just there, just like working out. He said he wasn't playing. So like when, when I flew to Vegas, cause I, I went from Salt Lake to Vegas and I went there and then that's when I ran into them. But could none of us play in summer league cause like the trade didn't go through for a few days. But after that, they had already played a few games. So they was just like, y'all don't even need to play, I guess. Yeah, cause I we we was down there and I had hit Auntie up cause I thought she was gonna be there. But she was like, he ain't playing. So I ain't going, it's vacay. I like, oh shit. Right, so I was really just out there chilling. I <laughs> I hated it. Every moment of it, bro. I'm just like, we'll go work out for like an hour. And then I was done for the rest of the day in Vegas. I'm like, bro, that man, I was done hot after 24 hell. hours. It was hot as hell out there. It was done after 24 hours. Luckily, I ran into JT out there. JT who? Oh, JT, JT? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah, he was just chilling. I go work it out, and yeah, me and him would just be chilling for the rest of the day. Yeah, you you was good, fucking with JT. That boy a fool. Yeah. What's some uh, what's some advice you got for our, our, our younger fans who watching and tuning in, trying to get to where you at, man? Because a lot of these kids, they aiming from what I see, they aiming for the wrong shit. They want to be on Baller's life. They want to be McDonald's All Americans still, and we got so many we can name that ain't done shit. They would, they did that, and it ain't it ain't work out. But what, what's some advice for them to be what Javon Carter is? <laughs> it's tough, bro. That's a tough question, for real, for real. Because the the way the way I gotta explain it to get you here, you probably don't want to do it. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's probably just some things you just don't want to do to get to where I had to get to. You know what I'm saying? Like the amount of work I had to put in, I don't even know if I'm going to like push my kid that hard. Mm. Because it was a lot of times where I was like, bro, I'm doing this for no reason. You know what I'm saying? And when you going through it and as a kid, you can't see the finish line. You know what I'm saying? You don't know where you doing all of this is going to take you. Right. It's just like, bro, you just got to have somebody you kind of like just listen to or or that you look at and you feel like that could be you. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be six foot and be trying to be a six nine uh, small forward. You know what I'm saying? That ain't gonna get you nowhere. Trying to be LeBron James at 5'9 might not be the route. You know what I'm saying? You gotta watch somebody else. You gotta do it a little different. So like, 
that was for me. Like growing up for me, like like my favorite player was Derrick Rose. I knew I wasn't gonna be bouncy like Derrick Rose. Yeah. But I'm like, I feel like everything else he's doing is possible. You know, I was just like, I'm just not gonna be able to jump over people and dunk like that. But it's another way I'll be able to put the ball in the basket. You know what I'm saying? It's other <laughs> ways. So I'm just like, like watching him just was like, bro, it's possible. Like if I work, like just listen to the stuff he's saying, like the mindset that he got, I'm like, if I work and like duplicate it like that, like I might have a chance, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, bro, it's, it's gonna always be people that's gonna tell them like, this ain't for you. Like you might wanna, you know, try something else, go down a different path. People gonna always tell you like, you know, uh, what's your plan B or growing up all my life, teachers, everybody, everybody just always asks me, what's your plan B? I'm like, bro, I don't have a plan B. Like I'll think of a plan B when I have to think of a plan B. Right. But I'm like, for right now, I don't have a plan B. Like, cause at, at the kid stage, not like going towards the adult level, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, the mm -hmm. only way I would do something different is if I had a traumatic injury and then I just couldn't play no more. If I got paralyzed, I was like, okay, then now I'm gonna find a different route. But I'm like, until then, I'm not even gonna look for a different route because I don't wanna do nothing else. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else in the world I would rather be doing right now. So I just I just threw everything I had and, and throw it in the duffel. Whatever you got, we finna pack it all in this one duffel and we finna take it with us everywhere we go, bro. I swear, and I was just like, bro, I don't care what y'all telling me, I know where I'm going hmm. and y'all could either come with me or just watch me do it. I swear. Couple, couple more, man. What, what's, what's the game plan for this off season? Cause I don't know when, I know you probably don't even know when the season gonna start. So how are you preparing? How are you? Yeah. What, what, what's that mindset? Like trying to prepare for a season. You don't know this when it's coming. Yeah. You just, I don't know, bro. Honestly, I just work every day. Like, it, like they gonna call tomorrow and be like, yo, we playing in a few weeks or we playing in a few days, you know, a training camp starts here. Like, I'm just staying on top of it, bro. Like anything I got, I'm just on top of it. Like my strength, trying to get stronger. Like everything I feel like I'm good at, I'm trying to be perfect at it. You know what I'm saying? My weakness, I'm trying to be okay at it. I'm trying to be good at it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I'm trying to take everything to a next level. Like I was telling you when you came in the gym that one time, I'm like, bro, if I shoot 10 shots and I hit eight, I'm gonna shoot 10 shots again. I'm gonna try to hit nine. Or I'm gonna shoot 10 shots again, then I'm gonna try to hit 10. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not just gonna leave on like, just, I come in here, I shoot 10, okay, I hit five. Okay, then I hit six, then I hit five, then I hit seven. Nah, I wanna hit nine every time, 10 every time. I'm not gonna leave till I hit eight every time. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know, I'm just working out totally different right now. Like I'm doing this, like the same stuff that I've been doing other than like a little bit, like a little more ball handling stuff. But like other than that, I'm doing the same stuff, but I'm just like trying to perfect everything. Like every single thing I do, I'm just trying to perfect it. So right now I'm just, it's like, I'm just trying to be perfect right now, for real. I know I ain't gonna be perfect, but I know the closest I can get to perfect, that'll be the better for me. I know y'all gotta be thirsty to get back, you know, and get back to playing. Cause the way y'all ended the season, y'all like y'all was just clicking on like almost every aspect. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all think that y'all can continue that into next season? You feel like it was just a hot streak or it was something about that bubble or something, what was going on? No, nah, I think I think we got it, bro. Cause like we lost a lot of with a lot of close games mm -hmm. by like only a few points that like we might have been in control of, and that we lost control of, or that we wasn't in control of, and now we was this close. It's like okay, if we would have hooped like another quarter earlier, we would have been cool. It's like so now I just feel like 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 the starters. It's like they learn how to control the game. Like late as the season went on, I would feel like, like they knew like, okay, another team get on the run, we'd call a timeout, slow it down, get things right. Or or the bench knew that like when the starters were starting off slow, we got to come in there and turn it up. 
Mm-hmm. And then the starters know, like, once they go back in, they got a hoop. Now it's like, we done turned it up. So now they just got a hoop. So it was like, it was like, we had the perfect balance, bro. I swear, we had the perfect balance. It was like the bench job was just to come in there and turn it up. We knew that's what we were going to do no matter what. Mm-hmm. We were just going to come in and turn up. Whether we was going to, whether we was going to, boost the lead up but it was like we ain't finna come in they finna start killing us for sure for sure it's like whatever we finna do either we not gonna score they not gonna score we gonna score they gonna score but they not finna just kill us that was our mindset coming off the bench i just feel like we just thirsty to get back at it i feel like yeah but you know it's the lead who knows how next year gonna look it's gonna be different for sure did you have like a a pregame song, a pregame artist, somebody you listen to that gets you in that mode. With the OTF on. Ride Wave, get me right. Ah, oh, he got the Ride Wave. Ride Wave, Ride Wave, a little dirt, bro. I swear. A little dirt can get you every game, I had to listen to Ride Wave. Um, uh, Thug Motivation. I ain't heard that, but I'm gonna listen right after this. Yeah, I got you. Love go. motivation get me right every time. I had the whole, I had the whole team <laughs> locked in. <laughs> Even money, bro. Money will walk past me singing a song. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like nah, bro. I was weak, bro. I swear to God, hey. P, when you listen to the song, you're going to hear the part where he say, nobody told me. Hey, bro, when I say money was walking past me singing that, bro, I lost it, bro. I lost it, bro. I Damn, was so- you, you put the whole team on. The whole team, bro. It was the vibe. It was like, it's going to get you right. We locked in. I'm telling you. I'm definitely going to have to... Definitely gonna have to listen to that. I'm downloading them over right. <laughs> Wait, that song got me right every time. I just can't hear it enough. Nah, yeah. Y'all got any more questions before we wrap up? Nah, just, uh, not I that just I can appreciate think you of. taking the time, man. I mean, I know yeah, you're busy. Nice. You working out and stuff, getting ready for the next season. Uh, appreciate P for having you on too, man. This is this is great. Yeah, man. I wish you number success for next year, bro. I can't wait to see you out there. Appreciate it, bro. Thanks, bro. Appreciate your time, man. Make sure he gonna be one of them guards. It's gonna be in a conversation when them guards start winning defensive player of the years. He gonna be in the conversation. Thank you. Them. That'll be a perfect you last know. question, Mike. I'm glad you brought that up. As a <laughs> yeah, star, does that bother you that a lot of the defensive love go to the bigs? Because the guards don't get no love, in my opinion. One hundred percent. One hundred percent, bro. You know when you know who the last guard to win defense player of the year was? Don't Gary Payton. No, no, no. Don't look it up. Don't don't nobody I ain't look, gonna look it up. up. But was it Gary Payton? Yeah. You wanna know what year it was? What what, what year? 96. 96. I was one years old. I'm 24. <laughs> That's the year I was born, man. 24 years. I yeah. was one, bro. Yeah. Oh. What blow my mind is though it back. Back then, it was a big man game, but now that we're in a, a perimeter centric shooting guard dominant league, I st- still sometimes don't understand why we ain't seen a point guard get that award yet. Not even in a co- who was the last point guard that been in a conversation? And we haven't, not point guards, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Close thing we really had is like the Fords were like Kawhi. I remember KD. Yeah. Or- not he had like, I remember he had like two top boxes three last year. Like yeah. LeBron. Yeah, ever up there. He always get first team love, but I ain't never heard his name in like defensive player of the year can uh candidate. Nope. It feel like it's such a like a stat, stat based thing, you know? Thanks, like it, especially just look at it's it, it's easy to look at the Bosco and be like, okay, I mean Rudy Gobert is the actual defender, but he got 13 rebounds, three blocks, stuff like that. But it's a lot of stuff that go more than the box score, especially with these guards, like when you guarding James Harden and what it takes to slow him down to the Steph Curry's. Yeah. Like it's a lot more into that. You know, that's not going to show up in the box score. Right. What's your opinion on analytics as a basketball player? How, how much is analytics into your mind as a basketball player? Dave's game, it got to be in your mind. <laughs> if you ain't thinking about the analytics, then I don't know, unless you're a superstar. Okay. But if you ain't a superstar, you better be paying attention to the <laughs> analytics. <laughs> that's what's going to get you your next contract. <laughs> I promise you, because that's what they look at, bro. They don't look at, like, okay, yeah. who do we need? It's like, 
we need these numbers. To no, I know they looking at it, but I'm saying for you, when you on the court, are you in your mind like, man, they told me I shoot the best from the left. So let me get my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Hooping, right? <laughs> Hell no. You hooping, right? I'm hooping 24 seven. In the game, in the game, I don't care nothing about no analytics. Bro, I, well, I always say when you in when like the in game moment, it's only about time and score. That's the only thing that matters. Because all I'm play. trying to do is win. Right. That's all I'm trying to do. I don't care whether it's going to be two points, three points, free throws. Like you just trying to win. Right. Yeah. I I always got to ask y'all that because they 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 put a lot of emphasis on it. And I know it's something to pay attention to, but I, I'm just not, I don't believe a player is out there like man. They said I shoot eighty nine percent going to my right. Hey, dog! No, I bet it is people out there like that. You think so? I bet it is. You know, you you probably right. James Harden is probably like that because they do it the most with the with the with Houston. Their whole scheme is based off analytics. So you're right. Yeah, yeah. I bet it is. It's like yeah. It probably be like, bro, you stronger over here. We want mm-hmm. you over here when you're in the game. So be over here. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, they yeah. whole scheme be based around that. They be like. This dude, the worst defender, so we gonna have statistically he the worst defender, so we gonna have him, you know, come <laughs> the screen. So hey, that's why I said, bro, with the game, it's like it you you gotta you gotta be into the analytics, bro. Because if you mm-hmm. not, everybody else is right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, it's like when you shooting a good percentage, they want you to shoot more threes. No, oh, and I know you were shooting forty percent. They love that forty percent number. <laughs> hey, they love the forty, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they love the 40p. Hey, every time, every time I'm in a gym, that's all I'm thinking about. Hey, I swear, I s- hey, P, I swear, bro. That's why I said, bro, when I work out now, it's different. It's different, bro. No cap. Because I'm like, if I'm shooting this in a workout, it got to be almost the same in the game. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm going to work out like I'm in a game. And let's see the percentage now, you know? So it's like, I ain't going there and just try to be perfect every single time. It's like, I'm just going to shoot it the same way every time and figure out how to get the same results every time. So however I need to do my feet, however, like, and then that's, that's different stuff I'll do. Like, I might come off this way and go left, right into my shot. But like, okay, do that 10 times. I might come this way and do right, left. Okay, do that 10 times. Okay, I hit nine on the left, right, but I hit eight on the right, left. Okay, mm-hmm. let me go right, left again till I hit nine, till I hit 10. It's like you just keep doing it the same way till you figure it out. Right. Like, would I shoot this shot in the game? It's like, no, nah, I'm, def- I'm definitely going to shoot this shot in the game. It's like, for mm-hmm. sure, I don't, I don't got this shot. So mm-hmm. why not practice on shots that you shoot in the game? That was one thing I noticed in that workout, even when, and I don't even know if I could say it. If not, we'd cut it out. But when you when y'all was going up and down for a little bit, that's what you were doing. Cause it was like you know you can get to the basket against those dudes at will. You know you can. But you were shoot you were shooting that 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 thing, letting that thing. Burn. How often do you watch me and you see me going to the cup? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like I'm not really I'm not with all the seven footers. Now nah, I'm cool. Y'all got it. Y'all yeah. got it for sure. You feel me? I'm gonna perfect this around here. And that's the crazy thing about watching y'all, because you still dominated that game off all jump shots in that in that workout. That was that was wild. I didn't shoot one layup. Yeah, all jump shots. All I didn't shoot one layup. All I'm like, my layups come from steals and transition, bro. Real tough. It's all about repetition, though. Getting that muscle memory. Hey, that's what I mean, Wayne say. Wayne say the repetition is the father of learning. Bro, I promise you, though. I mean, I remember. Way to figure it out. Who was it? But just like, I, I think it was Kobe talking about like how all the difficult shots he taking game. He was like, I don't even feel like difficult shots. Like I didn't practice some game like shots so many times. Like it felt like nothing to me, you yeah. know? I read that man book over and over and over again, boy. What? Uh, Kobe gave you the, he gave you the blueprint. Rest in peace to Marvel, man. Rest in peace to Marvel, man. Bro. I heard him say something about how he went to the gym and just, did the same exact shot from everywhere on the court. All like right dribble pull-ups. He said that for an entire workout. I don't know if it's a workout that you could tell me that Kobe Bryant didn't do and I wouldn't believe it. 
Exactly. You can tell, you can exactly. tell me he got a, a million shots in a day. I'm like, oh, I believe it. Like, I that's, believe that's, it. That's what Kobe was. <laughs> hey, Kobe. Hey, I swear, bro. I've been in that mod for hours just working on stuff, bro. Low key, the same stuff, just a little different. Hmm. And I'll just be trying to perfect it every time. I'm like, when I miss, I know exactly why I miss. I'm like, duh, I didn't shoot it high enough. I'm going to do it like this. It's going to go in all net every time. Easy fix. That'd be my thing. It's like, bro, everything be an easy fix. Mm -hmm. That's when I knew I got to the point to where I was becoming consistent. I was just talking to my homie the other day. I had seen some old stuff on me. They was talking about uh, right when I got traded. It was like my biggest weakness was offensive efficiency. I'm Mm -hmm. like. Dang, what? <laughs> hey, hey, I wish I would have seen it back then. I had just seen it. I'm like, but now I can tell though, with the way I work out, I can tell how efficient I'm coming. Like every day I go shoot, it'd be like mm-hmm. the same results every day. I don't be like one day I'm off, one day I'm on. Nah, it'd be like the same results every day. That's when I knew I was like, okay, I'm becoming a pro now. Hmm. Mm. Nah, yeah, when you, the number said too. When you put up them Javon Carter numbers, you gonna they got that big 40, 41 percent. Bam! <laughs> hey, that forty look good. I'm, I'm, that's all my agent told me. He said, "Man, he said I'm telling you that forty look good." <laughs> say when they look up your name and they see that forty, they gonna be like, "Oh, okay." He said, "You gonna have a chance just just from seeing the 40. Right. I was like, "Say less." Now I'm trying to get it to 50. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to shoot 50. Every other shot. No, nah, that's real. Uh, I appreciate you, though, cuz, coming through, chopping up with us. You know, you more than welcome anytime. Of course. Come on hand, talk shit with us about anything. You know what I'm saying? This ain't this ain't got to be no one-time thing. This is something the fans was looking forward to. I can't wait to see the response. Cause they don't know what's coming. They ain't got yeah. no idea that they about to get. They don't, know. they don't know. It's just gonna drop. They are gonna be like, "What the? What is this?" <laughs> hey, I'm what you go? What, what y'all gonna put it at? It's gonna be on YouTube. I'm. Gonna, I'll send you everything. I'll send you all the links so you can watch it, listen to it, however you want to do. Uh, I'll definitely have it to you. But no, I, I, we definitely appreciate it, man. Um, and you know, I do these. I don't never hear them, so I don't be knowing what I be saying for real. <laughs> for real? For real? I ain't never heard one I did. That's wild. That's wild that they don't be trying to get it to you. I'm, we gonna get it to you. Trust like, you me. It. We, gonna, we gonna get it to you. <laughs> but much love as always. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud as always. You feel me? To be able to be like, that's my cuz, man. He's doing this thing. <laughs> hey, anytime some shit happen, they be in my replies on my Twitter like, you see Javon? You see Javon? <laughs> but, you know, appreciate you though, man. Love. Well, hey, Auntie, shout out man. Auntie Cynthia. She shout gonna out my boots. <laughs> Yes, sir. Hell, <laughs> ma. We out, though. All right, y'all. Peace. All right, cuz. I yeah, appreciate you.